Russia loses access to $300 billion of its reserves. Foreign sanctions have seized about $300 billion of Russia's $640 billion in gold and foreign exchange reserves. Russian officials say they can't use $300 billion in reserves. They say a portion of Russia's foreign exchange reserves are held in the Chinese yuan. Russian data reveals that 16.4% of the cash is stored in U.S. dollars, while euros comprise 32.2% and those in yuan comprise 13.1%. Russia says debts owed to it by hostile countries will be reimbursed in rubles. Global central banks are this week set to provide a collective assessment of what is now an economically reshaped world. On Tuesday, the People's Bank of China will decide if it will lower interest rates for the second time this year. On Wednesday, the U.S. Federal Reserve is expected to announce interest rate hikes. On Thursday, the Bank of England appears poised to return its benchmark interest rate to pre-COVID-19 levels. And on Friday, the Bank of Russia will hold its first regular interest rate meeting since the attack on Ukraine. After more than doubling the key rate to 20% in February, analysts expect Russia's rate to remain the same. Russian authorities have reportedly threatened foreign companies with arrests and asset seizures if they withdraw from the country. Russian prosecutors have issued warnings to several foreign entities via calls, letters and in-person visits, including to Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Procter & Gamble and IBM. They've threatened to arrest officials who have criticized the government or to seize assets, including intellectual property. The prosecutor's office has ordered strict control of companies that announced the suspension of activities in Russia. The Hang Seng Index dropped below 20,000 for the first time since mid-2016. The Hang Seng Tech Index shed more than 7%, with market heavyweight Alibaba off around 8% and Tencent down more than 4%. And that brings us to today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires Ranking. Today we focus on China. Our biggest loser in China today is Zhang Shanshan, down $5.3 billion to $60.4 billion. Our second biggest loser is Chinese real estate mogul Yang Hulian and family, down $2.1 billion to $16.6 billion. And our third biggest loser is the chairman of Tencent, Ma Huateng, down $1.5 billion to $35.7 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Oman plans to IPO 35 state-owned companies in the next five years with the first listing slated for this year with two oil firms. Oman state-owned energy company OQ is looking at listing for some of its downstream and upstream assets on the local stock market. Oman is following in the footsteps of Gulf oil producers and looking at sales of stakes in energy assets aiming to capitalize on the oil price surge to lure foreign investments. Jane Champion's Dark Western, The Power of the Dog, won BAFTAs for Best Director and Best Film. She beat Denis Villeneuve to the top prize, although his sci-fi epic Dune won five other awards at the star-studded London ceremony. Britain's Joanna Scanlon won Best Actress for her widow's role in drama After Love. And Will Smith scooped the Best Actor prize for his portrayal of the Williams sister's father and tennis coach in King Richard. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.